probably you all know that March is Women's History Month in the U.S., so we have special guests today. Uh, let me introduce you first, uh, Leila Kamgar from the U.S. Embassy. She's the cultural attaché. And uh, Theresa Dittner, the CEO of the Dittner Construction Group. She's our special speaker today, um, and she's going to talk about women empowerment through business. So please welcome our guests. First off, uh, thank you all for being here. Is everyone okay if we speak in English? It's all right? Okay, good. Okay. Very impressive. Um, well, as uh, Dora said, uh, I'm Leila Kamgar. I'm the cultural attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Budapest. Uh, very happy to be out here for the day in Debrecen, and very happy to be with you um, and have our guest speaker here in honor of Women's History Month. Have you all um, had a chance to take a look at Teresa's bio? Well, I can tell you a couple of the highlights. Yes, no? Um, maybe. Um, well, Teresa is the CEO of Dater Construction Group, um, and she is also the mother of six children and the grandmother of uh, one baby. 18 months. Right? Yes, 18 months. Um, and this is her third business that she's that she's uh, started herself and run herself. Um, previously, she did a. Uh, um, a roofing business, and she also had a accounting business before starting her construction group. Um, she also has a background in accounting, and she studied that um, to give her a good foundation uh, when she went to the University of Maryland. Um, and over the past three days, she has been um, our guest here in Hungary, um, and she's been speaking to groups like yourselves. Um, in Budapest and uh, in Gdulu and now in Debrecen um, on different issues related to her story, um, her lessons learned as a leader, um, uh, as a woman business owner um, and a community leader, um, and as an entrepreneur and an active citizen. Um, so I will turn it over to her and let her say a few words, and then after that we'll have um, a moderated q and so, And I'm going to stand up. Thank you for having me today. And uh, I, was, I love this place, and I have to tell you that I've been uh, almost every place in these pictures, including to a rodeo. There's, you have to make sure that's for real. They uh, they start out the rodeo too um, with they they have this thing called it's called mutton busting, and they take little children who have like just learned how to walk. They're maybe two, three, four years old, and they put them on a little sheep, and <laughs> and they they ride these sheep across, it's very entertaining. So if you ever get to the US, and especially to the West, you have to go to a rodeo and make sure you show up on time, because early is when they put the children on the sheep and they have fun and it's fun to watch. But this is, uh, it's a pretty big country, but I've actually seen buffalo out in the West as well. And um, Washington DC is right here. This is my hometown, and I grew up just outside of the city. So I've always been very, very inspired by the fact that in, in our country, I have the opportunity to think as a small child that I can grow up and have a voice and represent people and maybe even create some kind of change. My particular opportunity has come to me through being an entrepreneur. And one of the reasons that I decided early on that I wanted to be an entrepreneur Besides the fact that I thought maybe I'm not such a good employee, is that I wanted to make the rules. I wanted to be the boss. And the bigger and more successful that I would grow my business, the more employees that I would have, maybe the more money that my business would make, and the more impact that I could have. So this is where I'm from. I'll tell you, Layla is originally from all the way over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've traveled pretty much everywhere in between. I have family here, I have family here, and I have family here, and here, and here. We do that, we spread out in the United States. <laughs> and my son-in-law is from here. It's crazy. It's, it's very interesting as a family to, to try and uh, get together. But the other thing is that um, from a business standpoint, um, when I look at the map, sometimes we think, you know, geography limits us, but now with the internet and the way that we can communicate with Skype, I'm finding that we're finding um, new opportunities to partner across the nation, across our country, but also across the globe. 
And I take great joy in telling you that I have opportunities with other women business owners to partner. And in particular, I've met some great women in architecture. So they design buildings and I build them. <laughs> and we're starting to partner and find ways to work together. And in fact, this last uh, on March 8th, International Women's Day, I invited four of my female uh, architect friends. Um, one came from New Orleans in Louisiana. One came from Vancouver in British Columbia in Canada. And then two were local from here. And those architects actually specialize, all four of them, specialize in sustainable building to um, reduce the impact on the environment and to reduce the amount of utilities and energy that's consumed. And of course, me being in construction, I'm always thinking of a way. There are lots and lots of companies in construction, so how can I have a competitive advantage? And I think that's one way that I can be uh, separating myself from the rest of the people that call themselves uh, in construction. And if I say we partner and deliver a package deal in designing and building buildings, that are focused on um, you know, saving the environment and yet producing a beautiful building at a reasonable cost, then we can separate ourselves. So it's truly been a joy for me to find ways that I can partner with other women-owned firms because for me it's like a dream come true. And uh, when I arranged for this particular dinner this last March 8th, one of the things I learned a long time ago was about the um, kind of the circle of economics. And basically, it goes like this. If this is a dollar that I found, I was able to, to get from outside of my circle of women business owners and bring in, and it's now in my hand, I have the opportunity to look within my community and see how we can keep it within this circle as long as possible. So we went to a woman-owned restaurant, and I insisted that we do that because that's how we're gonna grow and help each other out. Not to the exclusion of anybody else, but if we look there first, how can we help each other out? And it's the same thing that you have in a nation, in a group of people, any group of people. In Hungary, you wanna find ways that you can work with each other so that collectively you're stronger. So it's not just about a woman-owned business or uh, a Hispanic-owned business or a business from Washington, D.C., but the key is if we make very conscious decisions about where we put our dollars, we have power. We have power when we do that. And um, unfortunately, I think some, some, um, some societies take that for granted. And they say, yes, but I want the best, so I'm going to buy from whomever I please but they've missed the point. They've missed the opportunity that sometimes the best really is in your circle already, and those dollars can sometimes come back to you. So I wanted to share with you, because that was very, very important to me, and I'm actually always surprised at how um, I have to remind people about that, about how hard it is to get the money in, and then once you give it away, it's harder to get it back into your community and into your group of people. So I definitely want to give hats off. This is a program that's um, focused on Women's History Month. So I think we should applaud the men in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you that um, very often I find myself as a woman in business and as a woman business owner in construction. I'm very frequently the, uh, one of the very few women, if not the only woman, in the room. Um, so it just means that um, you have courage. <laughs> so um, tell you, uh, Lila uh, told you some about my, my background. And um, I think from the time I was little, I knew that I had a hard time fitting into normal situations, whether that was to be an employee who showed up every day at work and kept doing things the same way that I was expected to do them. <coughs> Um, I always had ideas about how things could be different, and I had a hard time focusing and sitting still. So I had to find a way to turn that from something that was a challenge and negative into something that could be positive and impactful. So um, I've been able to take 
what is a challenge in that, gee, why don't I think like everybody else? How come I'm always thinking of things differently? And say, well, um, what can I do with that? And the blessing in that is it something that's really important to me as a mother is it's important to me to try and create quality of life um, around people having a career and also being a good parent to their expectations. And I've become frustrated with the fact that your typical um, company that people work for has usually been male owned and didn't necessarily always consider that perspective about who, who decides what quality of life is. And having been a working mother for other people also, at times where I had to make a tough choice between my child being sick and who's gonna stay home with the child and keeping my job, I said there's gotta be a better way. How do we, how do we create a better situation where we're not leaving some of the brains and some of the talent um, out of the picture because they're women that want to stay with their children or even have a flexible work schedule. How can I create that solution? And so that's what I've created uh, my businesses. And the first two businesses. Uh